These medical students have only minutes to help this hunter before he goes into shock. He's breathing on both sides. They are miles away from any hospital. They must assess the safety of the situation, determine the condition of the victim, and decide on a course of action. And they must do it all without the usual medical equipment. Fortunately, this scene is only a drill. One of the many scenarios these University of Pennsylvania medical students will be put through during their six days of field training in wilderness and disaster medicine. I think you could try, or you could try to stand me up. The course puts students through the paces of being in an isolated environment, treating accident victims in austere conditions. Penn's Perlman School of Medicine started the wilderness and disaster medicine course for fourth-year students in 2013. The students learn how to improvise, such as in this class on treating a broken femur without the aid of medical equipment. When you're in wilderness medicine, everything is very unpredictable. Uh, you have to be prepared to use anything and everything to your advantage. Uh, for instance, with the femur fractures, uh, construct that was made earlier. Um, our instructor was able to utilize the pole of this gazebo as one of the things that we use to help us pull traction. That's the kind of thinking that we're really not taught in medical school. Withstanding harsh conditions is an integral part of the training. And the students are also taught basic survival skills, such as starting a fire and building a shelter using nothing but natural materials. You know, when we make them sleep out in these shelters that they built themselves, there's a different way you learn about hypothermia when you're at 38 degrees and it's raining all night and you're sleeping outside. The course aims to simulate real emergency conditions as much as possible. In another scene, a bird watcher has fallen from a tree. The students each get a turn at playing the victim. When you're a mock patient and we're having you pretend to be a patient, you really are lying on the ground in the mud while people are working on you. You really do start shivering. So it's hard to simulate some of that real visceral experience, physical experience in a classroom. Adrian Zielinski, a third-year emergency medicine resident, plays the role of an intoxicated hunter who has accidentally injured himself. He uses stage blood and taps into his inner actor to create as realistic and stressful a scene as possible. So as soon as I hear them nearby, I'll uh, start panicking. <laughs> right now, if you kind of look at the students, a lot of us, this is our first time encountering, you know, the bow and arrow patient, the arrow through the foot, and we didn't have any equipment. That's very stressful. I think that allows us to really be put into the mindset of a real life situation. Once you take someone out of that element where they have all their tools and supplies and consultants, and they have to fall back strictly on the basic knowledge that they have in life to manage a patient or many patients, it's, it's tricky. It's difficult to improvise. I think what was surprising is how easily it is to just kind of forget your systematic way of assessing the patient and really going back to the basics. When we talk about it after our debriefs or before preparing for a scenario, it all seems like it's common sense. But And for me, for me learning, it's always the hands-on is the one that really solidifies how I handle that situation. It's fine, but we can't figure that out until later on. We'll talk about that here.